Hi, welcome to the Brief Book Reviews channel, otherwise known as An Old Guy Reviews the Book That He's Read This Week. So what's the old guy read this week? Well, the book I've read this week is called Zero Days by author Ruth Ware. Um, published here in the UK as a hardback on the 6th of July, 2023. Uh, it's Ruth Ware's eighth book. All the previous ones have been well-received, thrillers, whodunits, that's that sort of genre. Uh, and this one is no different. It's uh, a race against time whodunit. So uh, what's it all about, I hear you say? Well, the book, fe the book features two people who are pen testers. Um, not one of those, but uh, penetration testers. So we've got Jacintha Cross, Jack, and her husband, Gabe, Gabriel Medway. And they've got a company called Crossway Security. And what they do is uh, take, on, uh, take on tasks for companies and test both their physical and their cyber security. Uh, Jack is uh, you know, had a bit of a, a misspent youth, was a shoplifter, but is very observant. So Jack takes so takes care of the the physical side of penetration testing. Gabe, her husband, um, was uh, is it was and is an ethical hacker. Uh, again, had a few problems in his youth, but now the two of them have formed a very successful company, uh, as I say, called Crossway Security. So the book kicks off with Jack on a mission. She's been asked to look at the uh, security, both physical and cyber, of a company called uh, Arden Alliance. Um, book kicks off with Jack uh, breaking into the building. Um, she's she's equipped with a few uh, few niceties. She's got a she's got a Raspberry Pi, which she plugs into a, an Ethernet Ethernet connection, connects her uh, her Bluetooth, and speaks to Gabe, who's back at home. Um, she's got some USB sticks that I've got and some nice bits of code on. That she's leaving around where which she expects people to plug in and and then Gabe will be able to see what's going on uh, on, on the inside if you will of, of Arden security and everything's going reasonably well until Jack gets caught and the uh, security team uh, refer her to the local police Jack gets hauled off to the local police station and is sat there she's got a she's got a memo that says that the uh, the CSIO the chief information security officer has authorized both Jack and Gabe to, to do this testing, but the police aren't sure. In walks a guy called Jeff Ledbetter, who's Jack's ex and uh, someone who Jack really doesn't like because he's, he's domineering and uh, didn't treat her very well. And he, yeah, of all the police stations, it's, she comes across Jeff. But Jeff confirms that she is who she is and they let her go. Jack's tired, she, she, she makes a few wrong turns, get home, and she eventually gets home in the early hours of the morning. Um, she can't get hold of Gabe, and that's unusual because she thinks Gabe doesn't normally go to sleep until she's home. Um, gets into her house, and she sees Gabe slumped in a chair. She says, oh, he's fallen asleep. But it turns out it's like there's an overwhelming smell, and she can't quite see what it is, and she realises it's blood. And Gabe has been murdered, his throat's been cut. She's in complete shock. She doesn't know what to do for a while. Um, eventually, she calls the police, uh, goes to the police station. They take a few details, and obviously, you know, the police are all over it. Sock over there. Next day, Jack goes to the police station, and she's asked some more questions. It becomes apparent during their their questioning that they can't. Their Socko team can't find any any trace of a break in, and. You know, in all these cases, very often it's either the, you know, the wife that did it or the husband that did it. And Jack soon realises that she's a suspect. She knows full well that she's had nothing to do with this. And while she's waiting in the police station, she gets an email, Jack and Gabe's email. And it turns out there's been a life insurance policy taken out, apparently by Gabe, a couple of days prior to his desk. And the payout is one million pounds. So Jack is sat there thinking, hang on a minute, you know, I've got opportunity. Up until now, I didn't have motive. If the police see this, all of a sudden, I've got motive as well. I know I didn't do it, but I'm going to have to find out who did. And thus the tale unfolds. Jack manages, using all her, her skills as, you know, breaking in and out places, managed to get out of the police station and effectively goes on the run. She knows that you know, some for some reason, Gabe must have got involved with the wrong people, and she needs to know, you know, who they were, what's been going on, who's involved, and she doesn't know who she can trust. So, she's eventually going, she's basically going on the run, trying to find out 
who killed Gabe, why Gabe was, was killed, but she doesn't know who she can trust. And she finds uh, a couple of close calls while she's on the run from the police. Basically, the only person she can trust is her sister, Helena. Um, and thus, th that's the tale, effectively. Jack is on the run. It's a race against time to find out who actually killed Gabe because the, the inevitable conclusion is that Gabe was killed because he was uh, somehow has some knowledge of you know nefarious activities, then Jack could be next on the list. So really good, fast-paced thriller. Um, really enjoyed it. I I'd give it 7 out of 10. 339 pages. I read it in one session. There's a, there's a quote on the front. You know, nowadays they ask authors to, to give a quote. And uh, Claire McIntosh, who herself can write a good yarn, said, the queen of the just one more chapter. And, and that, that's a very accurate description. Really enjoyed it. So that's it for this week's brief book review. Really good, taught, fast-paced whodunit. Um, you get engaged with the character of Jack. You want her to succeed, but you, you, you feel her pain and her sorrow as well. Uh, if, if there's any minor, you know, uh, minor issues with the book, I'd say there is some, so a lot of introspection by Jack. Once Gabe is dead, she imagines him talking to her and talking her through ways to do it. But yeah, that's probably being a bit picky. As I said, I give it seven out of ten. Good read, you know. The, it's south, in southwest England today, the weather's rough. It's blowing a gale. It's raining, you know, and there's not a great deal on the TV. This is the time, if there was a, a, at all, to settle down with a good book. And this is a good book. So that's it for this week's brief book review. 10-10 to do it again. Thanks for watching.